And here's a quick guide on how to take care of your Hillis semi-cuprius jumping spider. Hello everyone, welcome back to Spoodopods. I'm David and today we're talking about one of my favorite types of jumping spider, that's the Hillis semi-cuprius. I hope I pronounced that correctly. They're also called the full body jumping spider, which is really weird considering how tiny they are. This is just a guide to tell you how to look after them, how my experiences have shaped my husbandry of them, and generally just to introduce you to how charming a species they are because for such a tiny jumping spider, they have so much amazing personality. So before I start talking about what you need to look after one, let's talk about them in general. So the Hillis semicuprius is a very small jumping spider. They are absolutely tiny. They're approximately one fifth the size of a Philippus regis when fully grown, but they are so full of personality. They're very active. They will constantly be jumping. They will constantly be hunting in their enclosure. And the way their eyes will like dart to you when they see you in movement is just charming. I also think they're a very attractive species. The males tend to come with this sort of golden silvery sheen, whereas the females have this lovely um, brownish color with these cute little antennae. And the females especially love to stare at you when you move. I don't know if they're sizing you up for prey, we're probably a bit big, but they're very interesting. And I am just, I just fell in love with them when we got them. For such a small jumping spider, they're so adorable. So let's start off by talking about enclosures. Now, these enclosures for these guys are so small, I can actually hold it up and show you. And, this just shows you how small the jumping spiders are. These enclosures are approximately, um, I think it's eight centimeters by eight centimeter cubed. You can put them in 10 by 10s as well, that's completely fine. But in contrast to the Philippus regis where you want to put them in quite a large enclosure, these guys benefit from smaller ones. Given how small they are, that's a big area to explore. And if you, fill it, if you give them too big, they may not be able to hunt for their prey and they may run into trouble. A smaller enclosure is generally better for them and they benefit from it much more. I got the advice from the breeder, I found it's held true through mine and I've also had the sentiment echoed from other people. With regards to how you set up these tiny enclosures, you want a bit of substrate and a tiny bit of moss, which is what I put on the bottom of mine. You don't want too many decorations at the bottom there because you want to maintain that humidity with just a little bit because it's so small. And you know, you want to just, generally keep it fairly sparse but with some high up options let me just hold up this in fact i'll do a close-up now while i'm talking through it for our enclosures they have a cork backing which we got from the supplier which is really lovely because they love crawling on that we put in some ornaments and then we had a little branch that's glued in so they have a sort of um, arboreal option where they can climb up and down it i have ordered some extremely tiny platforms and feeding bowls they haven't arrived yet because i'm thinking don't, don't tell my partner, but I'll probably get some more of these guys because I like them so much. Um, but yeah, you want to have some things, climbing options in there, but you don't want to crowd it because again, it'll make hunting more difficult and also make your observation more difficult as well. Try and use a bit of common sense with it. And if you go in bioactive, maybe smaller plants or smaller cuttings, which you'll maintain as you keep up with the enclosure and observe your spider. So with these guys, they're actually not that difficult to maintain temperature wise. They're very similar to the Regis. Other um, Helios species require sort of tropical conditions, extra humidity. These guys aren't the same. They all benefit from the same environment as a Regis. So you can get away with room temperature between 18 and 25. They do tend to be more active when it's warmer. So try and keep it towards the hotter end of that. This Celsius, by the way, for Americans out there, apologies for not having a Fahrenheit conversion. Um, they're more active when it's the hotter range. And humidity, you, I tend to maintain it just with using a pipette and just squeezing a little bit of water onto that substrate. Didn't really put any spring towels due because there's not that much mold or any issues there. And just maintain that temperature and having a bit of humidity to help them molt is enough to keep them going and um, keep them happy. Other helios require so much humidity, which has put me off keeping them. But these ones just maintain that nice room temperature and maintain that nice bit of humidity a couple of times a week. And they're just happy and happily molting in it as well. Like all jumping spiders, they need light. You need a dedicated light source, unless it's somewhere where you can keep them like on a windowsill or nearby. But be careful with that because if they're in direct sunlight, it's no good. Off on a tangent, do provide them a light source. It's really helpful for them. It helps them hunt and it also lights up the enclosure and it helps you observe them and enjoy them as a species. They are really fun to watch the way they jump around and do silly things. As I mentioned before, humidity, you can maintain it just by having a soil substrate and using a pipette to squeeze a bit of water on there once in a while. You want just generally a little bit of humidity in there. And also if you really feel like it, you can just spritz a tiny bit on the side just to have a drinking option too. It's very similar to the Regis, just downscaled a little bit. Now feeding, this is probably something that you're really gonna to want to know if you're just considering these charming little guys. Food wise, you can basically feed them a diet of fruit flies for their life. They're quite happy with them, they enjoy hunting them. When they get slightly larger, you'll need to provide multiples. 
I wouldn't really recommend feeding them much bigger stuff. You can try pinhead crickets, but we're not the biggest fans. Some people try absolutely minuscule dubia roaches. You can provide them cut up bits of mealworms, but generally fruit flies is the direction to go with them because it's kind of what they'd hunt in the wild, absolutely tiny flies. So I see no harm in doing that in the home too. Now molting wise, these little guys molt just like a Regis. They'll go into their sort of web hammock and then they will follow the process. Make sure you keep that humidity up. Make sure you keep that um, temperature up while they're molting to help them out with it. If something goes wrong because they're so small, there's very little you can do. Luckily it's not happened to us, but I know it has happened to others sadly. So just try and keep those things stable and they should be molting fine and happy. Again, some general tips about their behavior and husbandry. Make sure you have an enclosure where you don't have to disturb their web. They will web in top corners or in areas there, so you don't want anything that's gonna disturb that. Their behavior is they're extremely flighty and fast, so you really do not want to be handling them or if you're doing so only essentially. They're kind of a species you rather observe rather than um, try and handle actively because if they decide to go, they're gonna jump and they can jump a really long distance for such a small spider. Otherwise, they're very charming. Like I said at the start of the video, they will be active a lot, they will explore a lot, they will look at you a lot, and generally hunt in very creative ways. Tiny, our male, he's not the most adept hunter, but he does try really hard, and it's quite charming watching him have a go at hunting fruit flies. So guys, that's it. It's a quick guide to the Helius semicupris species. I really love them as a species. They're quite beginner friendly if you're used to the tiny size really lovely and they don't require much maintenance so it's a really great species to watch and enjoy any questions comments happy to hear from me down below but in the meantime from me and my two little guys take care and see you later